Okay, I got it. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is uh, Reverend Mark Gilbert. I'm a uh, board member and researcher for the Science of Mind Archives. I want to welcome you to our November Archives Lunch and Learn program. This is where we get together as a group and listen to a rare recording of our founder, Ernest Holmes, and then have some discussion regarding that particular audio. And today our topic is man against himself. And of course, he means humanity against themselves in a more inclusive language. But we know that's the language they used back at that time. A little bit more about that talk and the setup for today. But as always, we begin our presentations with an invocation. And I'm going to ask one of our, my fellow board members, uh, Reverend Martha Quintana, to open us in prayer today. Martha. It helps if I uh, unmute myself. Thank you. <sighs> How good it is to know that there is nothing against us, that there is no thing that can be against us. For each of us are born of eternal light. Each of us are born of a love so powerful that it heals, it lifts, it becomes that something more in each of us, for we are born of it, made of light that lasts forever. And it is in this, it is in this energy that we meet today and listen to the words of our founder, Dr. Holmes, for there is truly nothing against us. And as we live and move and have our being in that absolute goodness, Life continues to be good. And it is in that realization that each of us lives even, even better today, that each of us have that realization that allows us to know who we are. And so I firm and declare today that all of us, each of us, take away that which we need to know, leave behind that which needs to be left behind, and lift up that which needs to be lifted up. I'm grateful, and for that, all is well. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Did we uh, did we lose Mark? It kind of look at that way. Well, I know he has something prepared for us today, so <clears throat> let's hang tight until. He gets back, and um, today's talk is called Man Against Himself, and um, Dr. Holmes is um, a master of that, and I'm so excited that everybody's here and can, can listen to it. Um, I'm in the midst of uh, putting together talks for next year, so please let people know that we are going to continue our Lunch and Learn series um, in 2024. And, um, and if you have an opportunity to go to the website and listen to some of his talks on your own, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, I was telling Kathy that um, uh, early in my, well, I actually lasted for quite a while early in my ministerial career, I would, I would uh, do our Sunday service, I, you know, get ready for Sunday service. And Monday morning, I'd get to the gym, pop in my earbuds, and listen to to a talk from Ernest Holmes and just get re-energized for the week. I let him be my, I let him be my minister on those days. And it was just, it was wonderful. So if you all get an opportunity to do that, it's really, it's really quite lovely. So, um, so let us see whether our, our friend Mark has, has come back yet. I don't see him. Well, in the meantime, I know we could probably, if uh, we go ahead and get started, did you want to do that, Kathy? Is um, go, go ahead and start the recording and then. Yes. It and is then, recording. We're good. Yes. Yeah. And go ahead and start uh, the uh, talk by Dr. Holmes. And then when Mark is, Mark comes back. There he is. Uh, ah. Coming. Is he here? It's Mary DeVore is, and then yes. Mark Gilbert. There he is. There he is. Good, good, good. 
Okay, so I'm sorry, but everything froze up here on my end, I guess, and uh, maybe it was me. So um, what's happened in the interim while I've been gone? <laughs> well, we were, um, I, I mentioned that we were uh, waiting that you had prepared uh, some comments before we got started on the talk. And we were going to go into the talk if you didn't come back, but um, but uh, yes. now that you're back, please. <laughs> okay, all right, uh, and, and appreciate your patience in in uh, in all of that. And hopefully, I just had to reset my browser and did not close everything else that I wanted to share with you. Uh, first off, I wanted to acknowledge that uh, you know we put these. I want to honor uh, Reverend Martha for her work in crafting this project which the archives and with her leadership is going to continue into next year as well. Yeah. And this all came from the fact that, you know, we've been posting a lot of Ernest Holmes audios on the website and Martha has been going through those audios and scheduling these lunch and learns and asking other board members and folks that are friends of the archive to host them. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to host today. As I mentioned earlier, our session today is man against himself. We're going to listen to that one in just a minute, but I thought you might be interested in a little bit of the background regarding what we've been listening to. For most of the things we've been listening to this year, they have been phonograph records that uh, Ernest Holmes released back in the 19, uh, back in 1957. And specifically, uh, here is a picture where I'm going to show you first on a, uh, I got to share my screen. Uh, here we go. And with, hopefully you're seeing on your screen, somebody show me a thumbs up that you got it. Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, back in 1957, Ernest decided to put together a series of uh, 52 45 RPM phonograph records that he was going to issue out over a different, in different series. And these were called the, uh, uh, the ones that were, got issued were called the series one records. What you're looking at is an ad from the Science of Mind magazine back in 1957, where he was announcing these uh, these records and the first 13 in the series. And if you look down on the list, you can see number F126 is the one we're going to be listening to today, which is Man Against Himself. Now, Ernest would script these and then he would go into a uh, studio and record the audio. And so these 13 were issued, but I want to show you what the records look like. And here is the covers. There's here's four of them, and you can see they were issued in little 45 records. And uh, of the 13 that were issued, all of the covers look the same, with the exception you notice at the bottom, they've got the code numbers like F125 and spiritual shock absorbers and F126, man against himself. So all 13 of these records were identical, and except on the labels on the inside and that little stamping on the bottom. Uh, the back cover of the records look like this. And you can see for this one that he mentions in it that it's a 52 record course that he was going to be issuing. And then again, it lists on this series one, the first 13 records that were being issued. Now, the archives has all of the records and they've been digitized. And that's what we've been listening to for a good bit during these lunch and learn sessions. But we also um, have a lot of the other recordings that Ernest sat down in the uh, in the studio and recorded for the rest of the 52 uh, records, rest of the completion of the entire 52 set. Only the 13 that you see here were issued. And the others, we have a, a number of recordings, probably about, I want to say, between 15 and 20 additional recordings of Ernest, who recorded other topics that were intended to be part of the series of records uh, for the full 52 series. Uh, unfortunately, the other records were never issued, and we I think he was intending to script and record even more recordings to flush out the full 52, but they were never uh, issued, and the only ones that were were these, but you, what you may can hear, and, hear on, and, there's a, and some of them have been released on the uh, archives website, are some of the other unreleased audios that were that were recorded by Holmes, and some of them are kind of fascinating to listen to. You'll hear him cough, you'll hear him flub up and tell the studio rep to go back to a certain word or phrase. And some of those you'll hear, you can hear out. And uh, we may actually, I think, be sure, sharing some of those in the upcoming months as well uh, on, on these lunch and learns. But just wanted to give you sort of a sense of what these particular uh, records were. 
uh, one of the, the, this particular one we're listening to today, which is Man Against Himself, the audio of this, if you're interested, is available on the archives website. It is available. If you're a website subscriber or a friend of the archive, then you know that you get 20 downloads a month by virtue of your friend uh, payment or your uh, being an uh, archive subscriber. And uh, we have issued Man Against Himself as an audio, and it's out there already for you. If you want to download this after you hear it today and you want to deal with uh, uh, playing it on your own, you can do that. We also are transcribing these as well as all of the other audios we have. And the transcription for Man Against Himself is not currently available on the Archives website, but it will be available next Monday because every week we are issuing out new documents, new transcripts. One comes out every week on the Archives website. We have a new audio that's coming out every uh, week on, on the uh, website. And in fact, uh, today we issued uh, this morning a new Raymond Charles Barker audio just came out on the Science of Mind Archives website. Uh, which was one of his lessons in his metaphysical study of the Bible that he did uh, many years ago. And so I encourage you to go uh, uh, check out, if you go to sciencemindarchives.com on the main homepage and you scroll down, the last four items are always there. And we have new content, at least three right now, new three new items are coming out every week, including short clips of Ernest Holm doing treatments or prayers on particular topics. So every week, a new document, a new full audio of someone, and a, a short prayer document. <laughs> so I want to apologize for coughing. <laughs> As Kathy and, uh, and Martha know, uh, I've been going through some flu. But I just want to say, I've got these little people in my body that are, that are filling up my lungs and taking care of healing me right here, right now. And I know that... Uh, uh, my body has the natural uh, information within it through these little people, and they are releasing this flow, and I am, am I, uh, I am a return to full health. It's before we go into the audio, I want to share with you maybe some questions that we can consider as we listen to today's audio. After we listen to the audio, we'll come back and you'll go into some small groups to discuss this with a few people, and you can sh you can share anything you want, but here's some prompts, and I'll copy them into the uh, into the chat area in just a moment. But I want you to think about what does you think Holmes says when we act against ourselves? And what does he advise us to do in conscious cooperation with that power that would rightly govern everything in our lives? And what does it mean to you when you hear him talk about that? And finally, how can you use the concepts in this recording in your life and any other thoughts that come up for you? Jot some thoughts down, some paper. We'll come back after the recording and we will... Um, uh, after we listen to it, we'll come back and we'll go into some small groups. You can discuss this and anything else that's come up on your mind. And then we'll come back for the larger group and uh, and do some sharing. And then we'll conclude with some announcements in the archives and give you some more information on things that are coming up uh, shortly. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Martha, who's going to start the recording. And I will put those questions into the chat for you. Man Against Himself by Ernest Holmes. We have all been told that nature made a chemical laboratory within us to take care of our health. In a sense, we might say that there are little intelligences within us, acting as though they were little people, whose business it is to digest our food and assimilate it, to circulate the blood and get rid of its impurities. There are millions of these little people inside our bodies whose purpose it is to keep us physically fit. But there also are other little people who aren't so kindly minded. And they try to tear things down and disrupt the work of the good little people. Every doctor will tell you that when he can get the good little people inside working with him, things are going to come out all right. We break a bone, and when it is set, nature gets busy, and all the good little people begin to knit the bones together again. And all the time they are causing the blood to circulate so that there will be no infection. But we are learning also that we can interfere with these little people inside us because they are subject to a greater intelligence than theirs, which is the person himself, just what you and I really are, our minds. 
One of the most popular psychologists in America told me he once suffered greatly from indigestion. The thought came to him one day that he could talk to these little people inside him and tell them that it really was their business to take care of his digestion. And so he talked to these little people for a few moments every day, told them how wonderful they were and how much he appreciated what they were doing and that he wasn't going to interfere with them anymore. He was going to be happy and he knew they would take care of everything for him and he praised them and blessed them. And in a few weeks his physical condition cleared up. Well, this is a body-mind relationship. It is reducing psychosomatics to its simplest common denominator. There is an intelligence hid at the center of everything. And we are intelligent. And the lower form of intelligence responds to the higher form. The intelligence in the physical body is a subconscious intelligence. It works creatively, but within certain fixed limits. It is like a man sent on an errand and told what to do and not knowing how to do anything other than that which he is told. And these little people inside us are supposed to be working for us and with us, but we so disturb them that they work destructively instead of constructively, that is, they tear down instead of build up. And this can be carried to such an extent that the wrong direction given to these little people produces a large part of our physical diseases. But right direction can reverse this process and produce physical well-being instead of disease. And we now know that while hate and animosity and confusion can produce discord, love can heal it. It is helpful to imagine and feel that all the little people inside us are working for us and with us, and to feel that they are connected with a divine intelligence which directs them, the very power that created them. And this brings us back to the need that we all have for a faith, a calm assurance and an inward sense of well-being. Not only is there an intelligence directing the activities of our physical bodies, the same intelligence is also directing everything we do. Not only does man operate against himself physically, he does so in every activity of life. How many of us really expect to be happy tomorrow? And how many of us, when we lie down at night, relax and let the bed hold us up? How many of us have confidence enough in life and in God to sleep in peace and wake in joy and look forward to the coming day with gladness and happy anticipation. What we need is a conscious cooperation and a glad one between ourselves and that power which, if we let it, would rightly govern everything in our lives. But man is so used to operating against himself, so used to thinking of himself as detached and separate, he has so completely taken the whole burden of life on his own shoulders that he has almost lost the ability to cooperate with that divine presence which seeks to be a partner to all of us. In our ignorance, we have not only operated against ourselves, we have contradicted the supremacy of the Almighty. We have denied ourselves the privilege of working with rather than against the power that put us here. You and I know that we did not set the stars in their course. We did not cause the sun to shine or the rain to come. But we can cooperate with this power that is back of all these things. But you can't unify and cooperate with something you don't believe in. And so the starting point, the very beginning of the re-education of our minds must be a deep conviction of firm faith. And since in a sense life is a stage on which everyone plays a part. There is no reason why we shouldn't dramatize our relationship with the infinite. Just think of all these little people working inside of us. God put them there. Why not hook them up in our imagination with a living spirit and recognize their presence and praise and bless them and even tell them what we want them to do. And each day we think how wonderful it is to cooperate with God. Each day we must think this is an adventure. Surely this is the greatest drama of all. 
But we mustn't forget the director of the play, the one who knows how to make each separate line and act become part of the whole piece until something complete is produced. God is the great producer, the great director, and the one who knows all the parts and where each one belongs. And we must learn to believe in this producer and this director, even though he is invisible. You don't see the little people inside you, but they are there, and your imagination can feel them. But there is little use in diagnosing a condition unless we find a way to heal it. If we have a broken limb, the surgeon sets it and puts the splintered parts together again that the natural currents of life may restore health. And so it is with all our broken lives and warped minds and all the frustrated ambitions we have had. For most of us really are only about half alive. And if we could blanket the whole world with one universal diagnosis, we should discover that an unbelievable amount of the troubles from which the human mind and body suffer can be brought right back to a few fundamental propositions. And both dominant and prominent among them would be this idea of love, which is as fundamental as life itself. Without life, everything is useless. Without love, everything is dead. Without love, some part of the body and the mind lies dormant, unexpressed, and crippled. There is no use weeping over the past, and equally there is no use in saying that because we have been wrongly conditioned in the past, we cannot be healed in the present and live in joy in the future. This is why Jesus told us that we must be born again. We must be born from fear to faith from doubt to confidence and from hate to love. And since love alone removes fear and restores confidence, love alone can create the strongest attitude of faith. Therefore, love is the vital center around which everything else must revolve. And since every day is a fresh beginning and every hour is a fresh beginning, we must not block this high gift of heaven. We must realize that the present moment, right where we are now, is the only one in which we can live. And we must cast all of our troubles and fears upon the four winds of heaven. And all of our doubts and all of our lack of confidence and enter into the joy of living and into the miracle of life. And how wonderful is this miracle of life. Just imagine possessing something that the more you give, the more you get, and something that cannot come back multiplied until it is first given out. You see, the one who refuses to give refuses to live. And the one who is afraid to love bottles up something within himself in such a way that the very thing that might bring liberation closes him within the prison walls of an isolated self. It is from this prison that we all should escape. We alone possess the key that sets the captive free. Let us then take such love as we have in our hearts today and freely give it to everyone we meet. And it seems rejected by some, let's not be hurt. And let's not be stopped. Let's not be driven back into our prison. Let's remain liberated. And if we do this, we shall find a reaction in our physical bodies nothing less than miraculous. For love can restore circulation. Love can heal the heart as well as the mind. Love can give speed to hands and feet as well as to the thought. Love can go out to create a better world in which to live. God so loved the world that he gave. And in giving... He gave all that he had into our own acceptance. And I believe that all the mistakes we have ever made can be swallowed up in love and in a peace that is greater than we are. And we must surrender all of our past mistakes into the keeping of this ever-present divine and perfect peace. We must feel that love 
is guiding us into kindness and cooperation with life and in deep and sincere affection with every person we meet. We must turn our whole thought to the belief that today is a fresh beginning, a new start, a joyous adventure on the pathway of an eternal progress. And we must trust love to guide us and believe that love guides everyone. Learn to see the good in everything and in everyone and feel that today is bright with hope and happy with fulfillment and know that tonight we shall sleep in peace and wake in joy and live in the consciousness of good. And so let us say, and God so loved the world that he gave. Today we are accepting that the divine gift which God has given us really belongs to us, that it is here and now. And so we are receiving that gift. And even as we receive it into our own consciousness, we desire that it shall flow out through us to others and to the whole world. God so loved that he gave. We are loving and giving and receiving. And may everything we think about be blessed and every act of our lives be a gift through us from the great giver of all life. May the peace and joy that is ours multiply itself a thousand times today and may love guide our thoughts and acts even as it guards our lives and actions. May the eternal presence be real to us. Let us not forget God so loved that he gave. Let us be certain that we receive the gift. Thanks uh, for playing that, Martha, and uh, welcome back, everybody. I hope you benefited from listening to that particular audio and of uh, Ernest Holmes' record, Man Against Himself, from 1957. And what we'd like to do now is uh, have you go into some small groups with some of your fellow people who have showed up today to listen to this recording and share whatever you glean from it. I think each of us brings our own lives and our own backgrounds to listening to it. I did throw the questions I... Uh, suggested earlier into the into the chat so you can look at those what do you think Holmes says we act against ourselves Holmes advises us to be in conscious cooperation with that power that should rightly govern everything in our lives what does that mean to you and then how can you use this in your life and what else did you get from it and anything that comes up for you that you like to share in your groups and uh, uh, Kathy are you putting us into groups now Martha, Martha. I'm putting yes I'm putting us into groups uh, how long would you like the uh, session to last? Uh, what would you suggest? I'm thinking 10 to 12 minutes, something like that. Sure. Okay. That works. Okay. okay. All right. And we'll see you on the other side and get some group sharing and also some announcements. Sorry, I forgot to push that last button, open the room. There it is. See you in a few minutes. Kathy, would you like to stop the sharing? Welcome back, everybody. Uh, or I see we have 16 more seconds, 15. Some people may be waiting at the very last second. And everybody should be coming back now. So, woohoo, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the recording. I hope you had a nice conversation with some folks, maybe made some new friends uh, along the way. And what I'd like to do now is just take a few minutes and see if there's any general comments or ahas or anything that was a, a learning for you that you might have gotten from either the, listening to the phonograph record a recording or in your discussion with your small groups or anything that's just coming up for you that you'd like to share with a larger group. 
or if you've got a question about something too that that you'd like to pose regarding the recordings and and uh, any of that historical bit uh, happy to, to foster uh, some answers around us if we can so if you've got a question I invite you to the bottom of this of your screen uh, is a uh, uh, an option for uh, raising hands and such and just invite you to do that anybody have anything they'd like to share any questions I'm going to go to a gallery view so I can Jim Jim I see you raising your hand You're on mute, my friend. There you go. <clears throat> Turner said those things back in the 50s. And, you know, since that time and during that time, why I think even modern medicine has realized um, the truth of the fact that <clears throat> your mind and thinking can, um, you know, definitely influence your body. So, yeah. Yeah, Ernest was really, really on top of the whole uh, psychosomatic healing aspects. Many he's done a lot of talks and and some records on psychosomatic healing and the interplay between the mind and the body. And I loved his visual of the little people in 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 the body. I, you know, going through this thing that I've been going through for the last couple of weeks, which I'm coming out of. Uh, it was nice to hear the listen to the recording this week and think, oh yeah, I've got all these little people sitting in my lungs that are basically acting, uh, you know, with the knowledge and wisdom to create the healing that I need in this in this physical form. Any other uh, comments, questions? Yes, Matt. Hi, I'm Matt. Um, yeah, so I, I like this. Uh, I like the the metaphor the of, of people being conscious inside of me. And then tying my consciousness to them by, you know, through gratitude and through acknowledgement and through love. And uh, although I and to, to mention, I, I don't think there's bad people inside of me. I think there's um, people that uh, uh, their job is to is to um, entropy. Their job is to break things down. It's not necessarily a bad people. They're just I have a different job. And um, I think that that's important to love them, too, in the whole freedom scheme of things, because I am an organism and that organism is quite complex and has a lot of little movings and pieces and parts. And I, in, in this in this metaphor, what I what I learned uh, is that this is the same metaphor as me being one of those creatures inside this larger organism, which is life mm -hmm. and that. It seems that the way to to communicate effectively with this is to use emotion. Um, like if I can feel loved and appreciated, acknowledged and um, appreciate, yeah, from God, and feel that that emotion, then I'm actually the same process of my emotion feeling parts of myself, and it's, it becomes an integrated whole. And that really is intriguing to me. I struggle with faith as a concept quite a bit. And the, the uh, tool of using emotion in order to relate from the macrocosm to, I guess, the cosm, then to the microcosm, um, that's a very interesting uh, thing to play around with in my mind. Um, and I'm very, I'm very interested in seeing how far the emotional channel works in that regard. Um, because you might have a negative emotion, I think God brought up in our discussion, and I didn't know what to, I, I just sort of confused about how that's relating. But it was an interesting, it was an interesting talk. And uh, I think that, I, I think that to identify this larger loving universe, um, being conscious of me, and listening to that is where we stop um, fighting ourselves. So that's that's my take on it. Yeah, yeah, beautiful observations, Matt. I want to pick up on one thing you just said, which I think is is so uh, important. It, it builds on the work of so many folks like Ken Wilber and Integral Theory and things like that, and the the work of Arthur Kessler, who coined the concept of holons. And without getting overly overly technical, it's like everything in this universe that's that is matter, it's physical, builds on the smaller bits. 
and that and that there's an evolutionary arc where things are whole and complete in and of themselves and they maintain that selfness but they're also a part of something bigger and so like atoms to molecules to single cells to small organisms etc so the little people that are in our body are actually little holons little aspects of completeness within us that are working with their right duties to make our bodies whole yet we also are ourselves whole and complete in ourselves but part of something bigger and that's where i think sometimes we tend to forget that that we are part of a, a giant interlocking humanity and, and universe and so we are complete in and of itself we're a whole on in that concept that i'm trying to explain but that we're also part of something bigger and grander and, and we, there's always a dynamic tension between us maintaining our wholeness and completeness as an entity and surrendering to the greater something that's that we're a part of and so we always have a be ourself, but also be something bigger. And those little people in them are, in us are being themselves, but they're also being a part of something bigger within us as well. You know, one of the one of the concepts, of course, is Holmes says that we act against ourselves. And who is who is who is it that we're acting against ourselves when we're doing that? And what did you think about that that question? When we're, I mean, the whole all, all, the whole record is man against himself. Who is he against? Who is he acting not in alignment with? Any any thoughts on that? Are, are you yes. asking who who we are not aligned with? Well, uh, Cheryl, go ahead and, and yeah, yeah, I am asking uh, uh, Cheryl. See your hand up. I'll go ahead and throw it to you. But when, when we say man is not us. man is acting against himself, or yeah. humanity is acting against himself, yeah. what does he mean by that? I, I think um, I call it getting in the way of myself. Um, it's when I'm not in alignment and fear comes up and um, other thoughts and other um, things. Uh, so for me, it's when we have the awareness to create consciously, which I think is what he's talking about, because either way, uh, and, and this speaks to um, what uh, Matt was saying, you know, the bad little people, there's no bad little people. However, what happens is, Either way, we are creating whether we think negatively or we think positively. Mm -hmm. um, so when we understand that, we can create consciously instead of unconsciously. Yeah. Um, and and you know, being human, I think we we all get in the way of of ourselves, and that's part of what we're here to learn is to be more in alignment um, with the higher energy with the higher self um and create more consciously beautiful, beautiful observations agree with you cheryl and diane hi uh yeah i was thinking about it in the against oneself it's there are unhealed parts of me maybe i've um absorbed a race belief of one kind or another or i've experienced some kind of fear or trauma and tying into what matt was talking about when he mentioned negative e emotions those to me can be keys to those unhealed parts mm -hmm. and what i like to think of both in terms of working within myself to come into complete agreement or alignment so i have a con a consensus of consciousness i might call it where there's alignment all the way through me and then then i'm in then i can step into the flow it, but then also looking at it as each human being part of the global humanity, that conflict we see out pictured at the microcos the macrocosmic level are again these unhealed parts or differences. And what what I like to visualize is that same process of giving space, holding a loving space that I continually now, or I mean I'm working to expand and expand my awareness of the way spirit holds the space for me, just this immense infinite space for me to come into that and and if i'm open to the message of it that loving that applies that healing that allows that pain to dissipate because that's only you know in the realm of infinity there is no time so eventually that dissipates beautiful beautiful well stated thank you diane so a lot of us when we, we we're getting at the same thing when when holmes talks about us being against ourselves and, and the flip side of that is to be in conscious cooperation with the power that would rightly govern everything in our lives. He's talking about us shifting our consciousness to not see ourselves as these separate little entities that are 
you know, battling with the world and out of alignment and everything, you know, and feeling like we're victims to to what's going on in the material world, but to see ourselves as these perfect, complete beings who are made up of perfect completion within them and acting in alignment with a divine power that's even higher and greater of us that we're a part of. And so it's trying to find ourselves in alignment with that total flow from the divine and spirit down in through the entity that's us to the to the little entities that are within us as well and seeing them acting in total alignment for the best of us. Uh, Annette, I see your hand up. Um, Mark, we have time for one more. Okay, one more and then, and then we're gonna do some announcements and we've got to end. So thank you, Annette, if you wanna go off mute and uh, and share what you had your hand up for. Unmute, unmute, ma'am. Hello, everybody. Hi, thank you. Um, oh, I just wanted to share how I love Dr. Holmes's words about how that power within us, if we just won't get in the way and, and allow it, you know, and I remind myself when I say a spiritual mind treatment, not to outline and not to tell God how to do it. And, um, but to say, um, oh, I got this from Louise Hay, who you probably may know was a science of mind minister. Only good can come out of this situation. And my highest good and the good of all concern. And to end the prayer with this or something better. And, yeah, it just, it always works out for the best when I don't try to tell God how to bring it to me, you know, but just uh, to, to, to say it that way, um, it, it, spiritual mind treatment really does work. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. And with that, uh, before I turn it back over to Kathy to do some announcements for the Science of Mind archives, I do want to put a plug in for the book that the archives recently issued. If you haven't gotten a copy of this, it's Ernest Holmes at Asilomar. It is a nice book with, with pictures of Ernest at Asilomar and transcripts of his talks during his summer conferences in the 1950s. Highly encourage you to, to pick a copy of this up. It's available on Amazon. If you just search for Ernest Holmes at Asilomar, I had the pleasure and, and honor to be the compiler of the book. So it was a great honor to be able to bring that out. And I think it's a great tool that can further you your uh, spiritual path. Oh, today's recording and the discussions that are around it have been beneficial for you. And with that, thank you for letting me host today. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy to bring us home. Hi, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Reverend Mark. That was wonderful. And it's always fun to hear Dr. Ernest Holmes. How many folks here have maybe never heard Ernest Holmes' voice before? Oh, we're preaching to the preachers. Okay, good. That's fun that you all here. But we have more and more. Thanks to Reverend Mark. He's the one. He's the little person behind the website who is uploading them. So we, we give him a lot of love. And so what I'd like to do is just uh, teach you how to fish. We have some announcements. I want to show you where you can find them. And I will invite uh, Dr. Jim Van Cleve, our board president, to talk about one in particular. So I'm going to share my screen. And uh, this is the Science of Mind Archives Facebook page. And so we do our best to keep it uh, hopping and up to date. So here's our lunch and learn from today. We have our birthday party coming up in January, but you can RSVP right now to make sure you're in the loop. And uh, this is a very important and wonderful preservation uh, seminar we're putting on. It's uh, complimentary. It's this coming Saturday. And with that, I'm going to invite Jim to share more about it. Yeah, this is, this is something really kind of incredible in that we have got two absolute experts. One is a, a well-known lawyer um, on uh, estate planning, and another is one of the most famous CPAs in the country. Um, and head of a CPA um, uh, operation. Tax laws have changed. If you if you have an IRA or you're getting close, you know where you where you don't want to pay taxes on that IRA, and it could be very very big taxes. The laws have changed in the last couple of weeks. That you really need to tune in at two o'clock uh, Pacific time uh, on Zoom and listen. I mean, you you would pay probably. 800 or 900 dollars an hour to hire these people to listen to what they're going to tell you and they're not going to pitch the archives 
we are, <laughs> Kathy and I. But the two experts are unbiased. We're talking about giving charity from your IRA to to any charity you prefer. Of course, we prefer the, the archives, but they're going to be talking in much more uh, generic terms. So if you have any interest at all in wills and trusts, and, and this is the first of three sessions, by the way. So it's Saturday at 2. Thank you, Jim. So again, that's on our Facebook page. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. I mean, I've been... I'm, so this is the Science Mind Archives website and sciencemindarchives.com. And again, all this information, here is the Abundance Preservation Series, our birthday party. We have uh, the book, uh, incredible book, Earn Some of the Silomar uh, that Reverend Mark just spoke about. And then we are moving to our new home. And uh, the building that we're currently in is for sale. And we're excitedly looking for our next evolution. And so we're requesting funds to help with that as well. It's very simple. You just click on the donate and put relocation in the comment. So we can continue the momentum we've already been doing with this important work we're doing. And as Reverend Mark also mentioned, at the bottom of this, towards the bottom, it's every time we add something, it automatically is added here. And so it's just, you can see what, what's new at the archives, you know, just come on down. There's at least three a week. And also, as he shared, the audio recordings are for um, website subscribers. You can just go to the join us, go to individuals. And, and, uh, and that's just pretty easy to sign up if it's of interest. So I'm going to stop share because we're at the top of the hour. We're just really, really grateful that you're here. Please tell your friends about this. And all these recordings are on our YouTube channel as well. So if you go to Science Mind Archives YouTube, so anything in the past is available for you as well. So thank you so much. And I'll hand it back to Reverend Mark. And Reverend Mark is unmuting. And I am just thankful for everybody being here today. I hope you benefited from this. And as we go out on our day today, I just know that we carry the love and light of the divine with us and all that we do. We are a beneficial presence for everyone on this planet. Blessings for being here today. Thank you. Till next time. Thank you.